This is Julie D. from NordoniaHills.News. The Cleveland Sports Show starts now. Hello everyone, happy Saturday. Welcome uh, to another edition of the Cleveland Sports Show. Today with me, Daria Sethna. Let's jump right into what we have to talk about today because we have so much to talk about. Let's get into some soccer action as we head over to the Premier League with Manchester City taking the top spot in the league. Just a reminder that point differentials, I'll remind you guys about that. If a team wins, they win. They um, earn three points. If it's a draw, then each team will receive two, po- or excuse me, one point. And then in a loss, of course, the losing team will not receive any points. So therefore, thanks to 21 wins, two draws, and four losses, Manchester City have taken the top spot in the Premier League with 65 points total. However, right behind them with 65 points as well, at this time with 20 wins, uh, five draws, and one loss is Liverpool, and then Tottenham Hotspur, Manchester United, and Arsenal take up the three, four, and five positions in the Premier League this week. In La Liga, Barcelona still remain atop of the uh, standings with 51 points, and their national rival, Real Madrid, um, has been improving greatly um, as of these last few weeks. They now have taken the second spot um, ahead of Atletico Madrid by one point. Real Madrid with 45 points thanks to 14 wins, 3 draws, and 6 losses. And then Atletico Madrid with 12 wins, 8 draws as well as three losses for a combined 44 points. It's then Sevilla and Getafe to round out the top five this week in La Liga. In French League One, PSG still comfortably ahead, not as much um, as last time. They still have a double-digit point differential, however, at its lowest amount. They lead um, LOSC by um, 10 in the point differential column. 19 wins, 2 draws, and still only 1 loss for PSG. Um, LOSC with 15 wins, 4 draws, and 5 losses. And Lyon with 12 wins, 7 draws, and 5 losses for a combined 43 points. And finally to wrap up the soccer standings for this week, Borussia Dortmund hold the number 1 spot 2 points ahead of the favored Bayern Munich. Um, Dortmund with 50 points thanks to 15 wins, 5 draws, and a loss, as well as Bayern Munich with 22 matches played so far on the season, 15 wins, 3 draws, and 4 losses for a combined 48 points. Mönchen Gladbach, RB Leipzig, both in the take the 3 and 4th spots for this week. Um, Mönchen Gladbach with 42 points, and then RB Leipzig with 21 matches played, thanks to 11 wins, 5 draws, and 5 losses for a combined 38 points. Now, all of you MLB fans, the baseball season is coming back. The Boston Red Sox, the defending champions, will look to defend their crown. However, spring training is coming up, not the regular season quite yet. Spring training will begin this upcoming Thursday, February 21st, as the Mariners and the Athletics um, will take the field at 3.05 on on that Thursday afternoon. For the Cleveland Indians, their spring training will begin next Saturday as they will um, face off against their other Ohio rival, the Cincinnati Reds. So a lot to look forward to, especially in spring training. We know the famous rivalry of the Yankees and the Red Sox will also be taking place. And then the Pittsburgh Pirates and Philadelphia Phillies will also face off this uh, upcoming, er, this next Saturday as well. And ladies and gentlemen, I am so sorry. I forgot this once again. But we have our sports fact of the day for um, today, this Saturday, uh, February 16th. It was on this day in 1950 that Paul Fagan, president of the San Francisco Seals and the minor league Pacific Coast League, um, announced that he has changed his mind and Seal Stadium will sell peanuts during the upcoming season. The day before that, which would be February 15th of 1950, Fagan banned the sale of peanuts, citing $20,000 a year in labor costs to clean up the empty shells. A barrage of protests from fans and media caused Fagan to resign his uh, decision. So, interesting. So, we had a fact last time that dated all the way back to 1890. And this time, we have a fact 
uh, that really talks about peanuts. So you really, we really never know what we're going to have in this uh, Sports Facts of the Year page. But stay tuned for next week as we'll give you another awesome fact from our sports This Day in History catalog. Now on to NBA action. First, of course, because this is the Cleveland Sports Show, we have to talk about the Cavs. As they have been playing better of lately, however, um, not significantly. Kevin Love is now getting back with the Cavs. Um, had 14 points in the first half of their game against the New York Knicks. Didn't play um, at all in the Cavs' most recent game against the Brooklyn Nets. The Cavs this past week um, began with a 103-96 to loss against the Boston Celtics in Cleveland, and then went on to Washington, D.C. last Friday to take on the Wizards, and um, unfortunately came up short by a final score of 119 to 106. Then the very next day, headed to Indianapolis to take on the Pacers. Final score of that one, Cavs lose to the Pacers 90 to 105. Cavaliers did come back home this past Monday and took care of business against the Knicks, and barely won that one by a final score of 107 to 104, and then possibly one of the most entertaining Cavs games of this entire season as they lose in triple overtime to the Brooklyn Nets. Jordan Clarkson proving himself once more is why he is the sixth man of the year this year. That's right, I said it. Jordan Clarkson is the sixth man of the year. If he is not the sixth man, that there's something wrong with the NBA because explain to me how you can get... 48 minutes, get 42 points, 16 of 34 from the field, 7 three-pointers, 8 rebounds, 5 assists uh, to combine with a steal and a block. If that's not sick, all off the bench, mind you, 42 points off the bench, are you kidding me? And you're not going to say that he's not the sixth man of the year? Come on now, Jordan Clarkson is the unprecedented sixth man of the year. He's averaging 17 a game. I know that the Cavs obviously aren't showing results. It's The results aren't showing in the win-loss column. But Jordan Clarkson is obviously proving that he needs to go to a team where his contributions will actually matter. Now, getting back to the Cavs, in that overtime, the third overtime, they were outscored by nine, thanks to um, an outburst by D'Angelo Russell to lose that game to the Nets, 148-139. to This upcoming schedule for the Cavs, Thankfully, after the All-Star break, when they come home to Cleveland, they'll have three more games at the queue against the Suns, Grizzlies, and Trailblazers before they head out to take um, on the Knicks at Madison Square Garden in New York City. And then we'll come back for a two-game homestand against the Detroit Pistons and Orlando Magic Magic before heading back out to New York this time to take on the Nets. And that concludes our brief summary for the Cavs uh, these past few weeks. One team that I want to, we're going to talk about two other teams um, for this week in the NBA before we get to all-star action here. And first we're going to head over to Philadelphia and talk about the 76ers who really are on a roll. They did win their final game before the all-star break in New York in New York City against the Knicks. However, this past Sunday put on an absolute clinic against LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers winning by 23 points in Philadelphia. Now, this is such a sensational lineup, starting lineup for the Sixers. You can't tell me that this is not going to win the Eastern Conference. You have Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, Jimmy Butler, J.J. Redick, and Tobias Harris. And that's only the starting lineup, folks. It gets even better. Off the bench, you've got T.J. McConnell, um, newly acquired center Boban Marjanovic, um, you have Amir Johnson, of course. You have James Ennis, the third, Jonathan Simmons, Mike, and Mike Scott as well. Now, of course, that's not the entire uh, squad, but look at this this bench. And I really think that the Phyllis Philadelphia 76ers were one of the more successful teams um, this past trade deadline day. Not only did you get James Ennis from the Houston Rockets, who I really think has been just balling um really uh, plays defense well. You know, he's um, averaging um, about 13 minutes a game. He's really a strong player off the bench, especially with his time we saw him in Houston. He's not uh, he's obviously not an all-star, but he's a great piece to a championship team um, who brings that energy and effort to every game. For John, and um, also for the 76ers, 
they really made a phenomenal trade with the Orlando Magic. Not only did they get rid of their problems with Markel Fultz by trading him away off to Orlando, so Markel Fultz might have some extra time to uh, contemplate about his shot um, when he go- travels to Disney World, maybe. But other than that, with that with that trade, the 76ers also receive elite guard Jonathan Simmons. And especially, you know, a couple of seasons ago when we saw him in that playoff series against the Houston Rockets and what he's able to do, we saw the emergence, we saw the growth of Jonathan Simmons, who had seven points against the Celtics this past Tuesday um, in 15 minutes. He's been averaging about 20 minutes a game. Like, just similar to James Ennis, not going to be, you know, some all-star candidate for this year, of course. But with his contributions and with the effort that he can give you off the bench, especially with the knowledge that Jonathan Simmons have has um, after experiencing his time on the Spurs with Greg Popovich, this is definitely a skilled player who also has, you know, a lot um, of basketball intellect, like I said, because of his time with Greg Popovich. Now... The question I have for you guys is, are the Philadelphia 76ers the new team to beat in the East? I honestly sure think that they are. I know that they did lose to the Boston Celtics, and you can never count out the Celtics. But, I mean, with this lineup in the playoffs, that is a lineup I definitely see winning the East. Do you think the same? Um, Text me, or excuse me, um, tweet me your comments on my Twitter page, at Nordonia Sports. I'm Bariah Sethna. Tweet me, do you think that the 76ers with this presently constructed lineup will now dominate, maybe not dominate, but win the Eastern Conference and get to the NBA Finals? Let me know. Now, I was talking about how the 76ers destroyed the Lakers this past Sunday by a final score of 143 to 120. We're going to look on at the other side Um, of that scoreline with the Los Angeles Lakers. And the Los Angeles Lakers um, have had an extremely disappointing season so far. They head into the All-Star break um, with a a record of 28-29. and Now, um, this past week on ESPN First Take, analyst Jalen Rose was talking about the Lakers and really what does LeBron James have to prove. LeBron James stated himself, I have nothing left to prove. Um, everything else for me is just like icing on the cake. There's nothing I am chasing. Listen to Jalen Rose and what he has to say about that. LeBron saying this, that he has nothing to prove, is basically not to take pressure off the front office. It's to take pressure off himself. Right. Okay? He now sees that they're not winning it this year. He also knows that Anthony Davis ain't a free agent this summer. He also knows that he probably is not going to team up with KD, probably is not going to team up with Kawhi, definitely is not going to team up with Kyrie. So what's going to happen with the Lakers? You ready for this? This is probably going to be their team going to training camp next year if they don't do a deal for Anthony Davis. So based on that logic, LeBron James has a better chance probably of winning an Emmy than he does winning a championship in LA. Now we just heard some harsh words by uh, Jalen Rose. Do I completely agree with everything he said? Of course not. I definitely think that the Lakers, they have the cap space. They have a chance not only to sign Anthony Davis, but they also have a chance to land another marquee free agent. We, uh, you know, almost every analyst at ESPN even thinks that, you know, there has to be, you know, some kind of free agent that will sign in L.A., whether it's, you know, Kawhi Leonard, um, you know, Kevin Durant, anyone really can sign in LA, Anthony Davis, of course. The Lakers really only need one All Star along with LeBron. They don't need, you know, some three three team magic because don't forget the Lakers also have the young stars of Ingram, Kuzma, and Josh Hart. However, there is one disappointing player who I'm of course going to talk about, and we all know that is Lonzo Ball. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final verdict on Lonzo Ball. Magic Johnson drafting Lonzo Ball was a mistake. You know, you had players like De'Aaron Fox, um, Jason Tatum, Donovan Mitchell, Dennis Smith Jr., Larry Markinen. I mean, and even Josh, Josh Jackson. And you're telling me you pick Lonzo Ball? Now, I will admit, being the second overall pick, 
Lonzo Ball himself needed to be a lot more proving um, of himself, and he's injured now, but on the season, he's averaging 30 minutes, and do you know how many points he's averaging in 30 minutes? He's averaging 10 points. He's averaging 40% um, from the field, 33% from three-point range, only five rebounds and five assists with a steal per game. These are absolutely terrifying numbers for Lonzo Ball, and they're even more concerning for the future of the Lakers. I'm not sure what is happening right now with the Los Angeles Lakers, um, but right now they have the ninth toughest remaining schedule in the NBA. They face the Bucks twice. They still have a matchup with the Raptors. They're going to face the Warriors one more time. They fa also face the Hot Nuggets and then the Oklahoma City Thunder as well. So, you know, I'm thinking... Yes, you have LeBron, but we know what LeBron can do. You know, there's just this past Tuesday in Atlanta, 43 minutes, 28 points, 8 of 20 from the field, 3 of 10 from three-point range. He's going to give you these numbers. He's averaging about 35 minutes, 27 points per game, shooting 51% from the field, uh, about 36% from three-point range. I'm not surprised by this. This is the best player in the world. This is what I expect. However, what I do not expect is just this poor... Um, these poor performances from Lonzo Ball and the Lakers I don't know what they're going to do especially with this tough schedule ahead of them now maybe if they were healthy and whole the entire way they would not they definitely would not have been 28 and 29 right now they need to get their act together because right now they are not in the playoff race um, they are actually looking in their 10th in the Western Conference at 28 and 29 as I've said before losing two in a row before the all-star break the Clippers and the Kings are the two teams ahead of them, and the Kings are 30 and 27. It not only does this show you how um, compact and tight that the Western the Western Conference is, but it shows you how much work the Lakers have to do in order to even get to the eighth spot of the Western Conference. And ladies and gentlemen, the Los Angeles Clippers aren't going away, especially with these new trades that they've made. Um, you know, getting guys like Landry Shamet. Um, still retaining key pieces like um, Gilgius Alexander as well. And, of course, they have the uh, mastermind coach of Doc Rivers. Now, um, with the Lakers, another question I have for you guys is, will the Lakers even make the playoffs this year? Um, tweet me at uh, Nordonia Sports. I'm Darius Sethna with your thoughts on the Lakers and their um, playoffs hopes. Will they? Will LeBron keep them alive, or is the w Western Conference just too stacked? Let me know in the comments below. Now, I did already mention the um, two teams uh, for this week, the two top teams, but. The latest NBA action we have is, of course, All-Star Weekend, as we had the, um, the, excuse me, the celebrity game last night. Now we actually have some real NBA players showcasing their tal talents in the Queen City tonight. And we started off with the AT&T Slam Dunk Contest. It'll be at 8 o'clock tonight on TM TNT at the Spectrum Center in downtown Charlotte. The contestants for tonight's dunk contest are Miles Bridges from the Charlotte Hornets, John Collins of the Atlanta Hawks, Hamadou Diallo of the Oklahoma City Thunder, as well as Dennis Smith Jr., who was newly acquired from the New York Knicks. The defending slam dunk champion was uh, Donovan Mitchell. These past few years, it's been Zach Levine, uh, twice in a row, of uh, who did play for Minnesota at the time. Glenn Robinson III in 2017 of Indiana won it. And as I mentioned, um, Donovan Mitchell of Utah, the Utah Jazz is the defending champion. But we're going to have a new champion this year. Um, Dennis Smith Jr. and John Collins are the only two um, non-rookies in this tournament. Miles Bridges and Hamadou Diallo, the other two rookies in this tournament as well. And really the more entertaining, in my opinion... Um, in my analysis of the NBA, and also really the one with a lot more focus and dedication is the three-point shooting contest. This year, the um, it's going to be in the same venue, of course. It's the second event um, today, tonight as well in the Spectrum Center, live on TNT. This year, the participants 
for the three-point contest include Devin Booker of the Phoenix Suns, the two Curry brothers of Seth and Stephen, Danny Green of the Raptors, Joe Harris, the former Cleveland Cavalier and now member of the Brooklyn Nets, Buddy Heald of the Sacramento Kings, Damian Lillard of the Blazers, Chris Middleton of the Milwaukee Bucks, it, Dirk Nowitzki may be playing in his final All-Star game, and then, of course, Kemba Walker of the hometown Hornets. Now, um, there are many great three-point shooters. Of course, you have uh, Steph and Seth out there. Danny Green has really been proving himself on the Raptors. Damian Lillard, of course, the star for the Trailblazers. And Chris Middleton having himself a year as well, especially as we see what the Bucks have been able to do this year, um, along with Dirk Nowitzki. Maybe his final all-star appearance um, really has been an absolute legend. The past winners of the All-Star three-point contest have included uh, Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson in 2015-2016, Eric Gordon of Houston won it in 2017, and the most recent champion of the um, three-point contest is Devin Booker, and he's actually, as I said, um, in the three-point contest this year as well. So Booker looking to defend his crown um, tonight in Charlotte. Um, but he's going to have to do it against guys like Stephen Curry, Danny Green, Damian Lillard, and Kemba Walker. Will he be able to do it? Find out tonight at 8 on TNT for the uh, three-point contest and dunk contest. But it gets even better than that, ladies and gentlemen. The all-star game is tomorrow at 8 o'clock on TNT as well. Team LeBron and Team Giannis, uh, the two captains, of course, the starters for Team LeBron will get that started for you. Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, of course we know LeBron James, and then Toronto Raptors superstar Kawhi Leonard fi finishing out that starting five. And for Team Giannis, of course we already know the Greek freak is going to be um, one of those starting five. We have Stephen Curry, Joel Embiid, Paul George, and Kemba Walker. Ladies and gentlemen, it does not get any better than this. For the reserves, for Team LeBron, LaMarcus Aldridge, Bradley Beal, Anthony Davis, Damian Lillard, Ben Simmons, Clay Thompson, Carl Anthony Towns, Dwayne Wade, Michael Malone is the coach, Michael Malone um, of the Denver Nuggets for Team LeBron. It is Blake Griffin, um, Nikola Jokic, um, to mention the reserves for Team Giannis, as I said, Griffin, Jokic, Kyle Lowry of the Raptors, and then Chris Middleton, Dirk Nowitzki, Victor Oladipo, D'Angelo Russell, Nikola Vucevic, and Russell Westbrook to make up that reserve team for Team Giannis. And then Mike Budenholzer of the Milwaukee Bucks will be coaching um, Team Giannis. Now tweet me, at Nordonia Sports, who do you think is going to win um, bet the All-Star game this year, Team LeBron or Team Giannis? Last year when LeBron was the captain of his team for the first time, they were able to defeat Team Steph narrowly by a final score of 148 to 143. Hopefully we can have that same competition, that same level of intensity and just dominance in the game. All of these just sensational players, I'm really looking forward to it. And hopefully we'll get a great, entertaining, and competitive match um, tomorrow in Charlotte, which is really the uh, main feature of All-Star Weekend. And that really concludes our show for this week. Uh, once again, thank you guys so much for listening. I have posted a few thing, new things on my Twitter account, so make sure that you uh, check it out as I'm always posting new stuff on there as well. Um, hopefully we'll be back on the, we'll be back with you actually this Tuesday for a um, Nord other Nordonia Knights basketball broadcast. And speaking of those broadcasts, if you haven't seen them, not only are they on my Twitter page, but they're also on NordoniaHills.news. And also on NordoniaHills.news, you can see some of the other terrific work um, that students are doing here in the Nordonia community. You can also see um, all the other terrific events that are going on here in Nordonia Hills. So if you haven't checked out uh, some of the most recent work that we've been doing, make sure you do because there's always new upcoming stuff almost every single day. And that's going to do it f this week for the Cleveland Sports Show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Hope you learned a lot, especially from 
our sports fact of the day today. Have a terrific weekend and a happy President's Day. Thank you guys so much for listening.